Joining us next here on the H&M Trucking Podcast is Service and Equipment Manager Jim Musil. Jim, it's good to have you back on. Did you think I'd lost your number? It's been a while. No, I, I know you haven't lost my number because you called me the other day and I was like, hey, it's Marcus. Yeah, well, I've got it in triplicate now. I even put it in my wife's phone just in case. Oh, really? So you didn't take my advice and just hit the delete and then it says delete again? <laughs> I didn't, Jim. I can't bring myself to do so. I just can't. I have too much fun talking to you, man. Oh, yeah. It's, it's always a good time. <laughs> well, uh, I wanted to get you on here because, uh, you know, we're constantly looking for different things to bring up here on the podcast. And uh, last week's episode and the week before that, we've had some really good response from the drivers about the episodes. And I started asking Sherry over in recruiting, and I also started kind of trolling the uh, H&M Facebook page, not trolling it in that I'm on there talking smack to him. Just I'm lurking in the background, seeing what the drivers are talking about, seeing if there's something we could do a podcast episode about. And I want to read you a short little excerpt from an email I got from Sherry when I was asking her about some things. She said, okay. I would recommend a shop talk with Jim. Recruiting can also weigh, on this as w- weigh in on this as well. We have some drivers complain about the shop, but then I talk to people that we recruit to the team and they tell us that our shop does an absolutely amazing job compared to other places they've worked. Uh, Sometimes I think it's the communication, which is something that you mentioned to me yesterday when we were on the phone talking about this. And uh, she says she wanted to hear about how we could handle this better. What does the shop need from drivers to make these appointments run smoother and, and anything else that really can up our communication here uh, to make things easier on both the driver and the shop. So talk to me a little bit about the trends you're seeing right now in the shop. Uh, anything that you would like to see cleaned up or anything like that? Yeah, a little bit. We see a lot of the DVIRs. Um, we, you know, there isn't eight people looking at DVRs every day. It's usually a couple of gentlemen. Um, so what we always like to do is they'll put it in DVIR. We just want them to reach out to the shop. If you put a DVIR in, still reach out to the shop. Give us a call. I reach out to them through Sam Sarah messages, um, give them our phone number, give them our options to hit number six so we can get you into a shop, get your work, you know, get the work done. But trying to work with dispatch too and, and their loads, you know. Mm-hmm. So we're always doing that. I always ask them, instead of just sending an email with your new email address, if they could put their truck number, trailer number, a little description of communication for us and their name. That would be helpful. But still, call our office at the shop so we can get it all scheduled. 270 trucks running around, it's pretty hard to chase every email or, or every little note that they put out there. If they could just call us. I mean, sometimes our phones get really busy and, and we don't need to put them on hold, but we want to get everything fixed in a timely manner for them too. So they don't sit and waste their clock and, and they can still keep rolling and make, you know, make the road. Sure. Well, it's one of those things that sometimes I think is a little bit um, under-recognized, Jim, and that is that, you know, with all of the ways that we have to contact one another, The easy ways are texting and email. It's easy to just throw some text down on a page and shoot it off into space. And then what the problem with that is the person that sends it tends to forget about it or the person that receives it can't look at it right away. Uh, The old school phone call does a lot, man. I thought about sending you a text message yesterday, but I just called you up instead. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden, within five minutes, we were scheduled. And it really does... um, it removes a lot of complication in the communication process when you just err on the side of the good old fashioned phone call. Right. Yeah. So like when you used to shoot me emails, um, sometimes it was a couple hours before I even caught up to them. I mean, the best for me is reach out, give me a call on the phone. I pick it up. Yeah. And even if you don't pick it up, you'll call back if it's anybody but me. Right. Yeah. No, I I can pick (laughs) it up or I'll even call you back. Now my, I always like to say the best communication line is just pick up the phone, make the call. Um, let us talk to you in person. That's the best best re- results we can have, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we talked last week about our CSA scores. They're not looking too great right now. There's a few things that uh, we talked about uh, around, you know, kind of surrounding safety and things like that. But another thing that Sherry brought up in this email that uh, we were talking about is, 
she asked how the drivers are getting their inspections done and if they have a problem how does the shop help them can you speak to me on that at all yeah so so we always want them like if you stop i want you to you know you get out stretch your legs whatever get fuel go for a walk come back to your truck check it out if you see something new give us a call Let's get it set up so we can find it down the road where we can get you fixed up. Um, tires, if you got a light. I mean, the hardest part is, is we see a lot of these pictures that the drivers take. They put them in a DVIR, but they never pick up the phone and call us. So when we look at it the next day, that driver doesn't have that trailer. Now somebody else has got to get it. So that's where we struggle a little bit more. We just want the more of the communication from the drivers. Because there are eyes out there, mm-hmm. and if, if we're not out there with them, we want to be with them through a phone call so we can try and get that fixed one. Sure. And, you know, the shop's a well-oiled machine. You guys do great work over there. I've seen it firsthand. Uh, I didn't get to spend a lot of time over there, but I was over there for a few hours, and, and just knowing because I tried to talk to some of the techs, they're busy. They don't have the time to just, hey, there's a podcast guy here. Let's spend 10 minutes with him because they've always got something going on. So communicating effectively with the shop is absolutely paramount because they want to help you, but they also have a lot of other people to help. And another thing that I think is important to touch on here is that since the CSA score is what it is and we are on mandatory pull in status, uh, even a busted light or an, a light that's out or maybe some slight wear on the tires, like you're going to start getting citations for this stuff and those are going to add up and it's only going to make the CSA score problem go on longer. So the best way to go about this is just to call you or call the shop, I guess. Yeah, just call the shop. I mean, if you see something on a truck, on the trailer, just pick up the phone, give us a call and get let's get it set up. Let's get it fixed. Absolutely. Um, it's easier to get it fixed and get a ticket down the road and then just watch it constantly be pulled in the scales. And then I know drivers get frustrated because it's their time they're wasting, um, sitting there getting an inspection. But the hard part is, is you think you go in there and get these inspections and get clean ones. It'd be nice to have all clean ones, but we know we're going to not have always a clean one. Mm-hmm. That's where we always rely on the eye of the, the driver and, and they're the eyes, ears and, and give us con, you know, give us some contact and communication, and let's get this thing, you know, back up to where we don't have to worry about this anymore. Right, right. 